This presentation is called, What is Byproduct Mutualism? And in it, we're going to answer three questions. What is byproduct mutualism? How does it differ from reciprocal altruism? And why does that matter? Why do we care to make this distinction? And it turns out it's fairly important. So again, a key contributor to the study of reciprocal altruism is Robert Tribbers in his paper, The Evolution of Reciprocal Altruism. And in this paper, he tried to answer the question, which is very important, can we extend cooperation beyond kinship? But it turned out he had a bad example that he used to illustrate this because he wanted to show that this could transcend kinship, he used an example of what are called cleaner fish. And this is a little Wikipedia uh, illustration of what's called a clownfish that's cleaning the tentacles of a sea anemone. And the idea here is that the sea anemone gets its tentacles cleaned, which reduces infection, that would reduce its reproductive fitness and the cleaner fish gets protection from predators while it's in those te tentacles, which are poisonous uh, to other fish, and it also gets some food. So this is a symbiotic interaction for sure. Both organisms are benefiting from their interaction, but they're not benefiting through reciprocity. So this is not a good example of reciprocity, it's a good example of symbiosis and a good example of what's called byproduct mutualism. So what is byproduct mutualism and how does it differ from reciprocal altruism? And this is an important distinction to make. So in byproduct mutualism, the benefits are mutual and they're simultaneous. So it's not the case in the example that we used that the clownfish performs an act to benefit the sea anemone and then the sea anemone reciprocates that act. They're both receiving benefits simultaneously and the benefits are mutual immediately. And this is quite different from reciprocal altruism where acts of altruism are exchanged and one organism harms its reproductive fitness to benefit another. So what's critical to reciprocal altruism is that there's a delay between those altruistic acts, and because of that, there's a possibility of not reciprocating and a temptation to cheat in the relationship. And if we look at byproduct mutualism, on the other hand, just like the benefits are mutual and simultaneously, just so the cost of cheating are mutual and simultaneous. So if the anemone has stung the clownfish for some reason, it would lose the cleaning. Neither can participate in the relationship without both benefiting, and neither can defect in the relationship without both being harmed, and both benefits and harm are mutual and simultaneous. That makes it byproduct mutualism. So let's follow up on this with an example. One way that we can frame byproduct mutualism is with the phrase, to save myself, I have to save you. So imagine that we're both locked in a cage together and we can't get out and there's a bomb in the cage. Well, it's byproduct mutualism if I defuse that bomb and save my own life and save your life in the course of that, because there's no way that I can save you without saving myself. What I'm doing to benefit you benefits me equally. Now, if it was reciprocal altruism, let's say that you're in a, in a room with a bomb and you can't get out, and I enter that room when I don't need to be there, and I put myself at risk to save you, that's something quite different. And that's reciprocal altruism. Because later you might opt out of taking an equal risk to save my life. 
So why does this distinction matter so much? Well, if you think about it, in byproduct mutualism, it's a situation where either everyone is going to cooperate or no one is going to cooperate. And so as Lee Allen Dugatin phrases it, the environment of byproduct mutualism favors either everyone cooperating or no one cooperating. There is really no altruism involved and there is no reciprocity involved. Instead, it's a situation where either all of us benefit or none of us benefit. And because of that, byproduct mutualism is not a Darwinian puzzle. It presents no puzzle for us to solve. It's immediately explainable by the benefits that are conferred on everyone. We don't have to think about why is this individual harming their reproductive success to benefit others because, in fact, in benefiting themselves, they're just as a byproduct of that benefiting others, and there's nothing then to explain. So altruism is a Darwinian puzzle. Byproduct mutualism is not a Darwinian puzzle. And that's right at the heart of the matter. Thank you for listening.